Mr. Of, Miss, oh, of course, the Minister, um, Your Excellency, the Minister of National Healing and Reconciliation in Zimbabwe, um, Ms. Sekai Holland. It's the first time that you are in Holland, and we hope it's not the last time, because you, you could have been earlier here, since you are named after our country, Holland. <laughs> hmm? Thank you very much. Um, I'm actually married to an Australian whose people come from Cornwall in the lowlands in England um, many um, share generations ago. Um, so I've carried this name since 1968. But this is the first time I do come to Holland, the Netherlands. <laughs> um, I um, I really feel very overwhelmed being here to be in solidarity with Miriam, an old friend on this very special day. But I have a written speech, which I will leave, but I will summarize. I will start really by um, recognizing the Right Honorable uh, former Prime Minister, distinguished ministers, former ministers, um, distinguished guests, the rector, of the university um, and distinguished guests um, in this really great gathering. Um, let me write. Distinguished guests, all protocol observed. I really humbly take this opportunity to stand before this unique, distinguished gathering to express how humbled the organ for national healing, reconciliation, and uh, integration was by the invitation to come and be here on this day. Um, I think that uh, the Netherlands as a country has always been by the side of those who really uh, were fighting for justice and for liberation for themselves. In this great country, we in the organ are honored on this day when a new chair in honor of the great Maha Klompe, we are here to witness and stand in solidarity with a long friend of Zimbabwe, long standing friend, Professor Dr. Mariam Van Rissen and her husband, Simon Stoker of Eurostep. Um, as we see the launch of this really important chair being put in place. Um, distinguished guests, many will be wondering here, what brings the co-minister of Zimbabwe, Organ for National Healing, Reconciliation and Integration, to this special occasion at the University of Tilburg today? As many have asked me since my arrival here a week ago, Professor Dr. Van Rissen's IPA, Europe External Policy Advisors, was the organ for National Healing's first partner when we were first established in February 2009. Dr. Van Rissen, on hearing that there was such an instrument set in Zimbabwe, actually offered advice on how we could look at United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 and hold a follow-up conference to the one that had been held in Liberia the year before. It was very confusing for us. So she invited us to Brussels, where we were actually introduced to this new world of how we could use all institutions in Zimbabwe in our pursuit to find an instrument for peace in Zimbabwe by using all institutions in Zimbabwe as entry points to encourage them to get, align their policies, their programs, and their budgets to national healing. So what is the organ for national healing in Zimbabwe? I will just put it in a context so that we are together. There was in 19, uh, not 19, I'm going, <laughs> there was in 2007, a very bad, um, very bad event when uh, the Mugabe government at that time tortured very badly 140 members of the opposition. 
The outcome of that, the pictures that went internationally, was for the African Union to force the Mugabe government to enter an agreement with the opposition parties to actually get a transition going in the country where an inclusive government could run the country and prepare for free and fair elections. So a global political agreement was arrived at and signed by three leaders of, pres uh, three presidents of, uh, leaders of political parties leading to the elections of 2008 when an inclusive government was sworn in in 2009 where five concurrent processes were instituted to result in processes that would produce institutions to protect democracy and lead to free and fair elections. These uh, processes are the um, government work plan in the prime minister's department, which takes all the ministries in five clusters and every 100 days we meet to put together our pro policies, budgets, and our programs so that we are in synchrony. There is a modernization program which is in the president's office, which has produced an e-government and a results-based management. This is also preparing these two processes for free and fair elections. The third one is COPAC, the constitution-making process. The fourth one is the um, uh, JOMIC, which is an instrument to monitor violence record it and really deal with it on the spot. The fifth process was the establishment of the organ for national healing, reconciliation, and um, integration. What was our task? Our task was simply to think about how we could produce a mechanism that would bring peace to Zimbabwe. I'm glad to announce that as a result, of the processes that we have undertaken with Dr. Van Riesen in Zimbabwe, in Brussels, in New York, and with Mrs. Mary Robinson, the president of Ireland, we have been able to get processes that really gave us an understanding of how to include different ministries, different NGOs, different players in the country to come up with a grassroots-based inclusive process which would get all Zimbabweans expressing how they want to see a mechanism for peace unfolding. What we have come up with three months ago was after a long consultative process with traditional leaders who told us that Zimbabwe does have a traditional conflict resolution method which is based on truth, justice, and forgiveness as the basis for reconciliation between people, among families, in communities. We incorporated this because it's based on the African philosophy of Ubuntu as how people would center it in the mechanism for peace. Three months ago, we got all our data together, which was um, now uh, really worked around a strategic plan which we produced 18 months after we were formed. Three months ago, we got a consultant who helped us to produce the document on the policy for peace in Zimbabwe. Out of this policy, a month later, we produced the principles for making peace in Zimbabwe. And as I speak, uh, two weeks ago, these documents and the code of conduct of political parties were taken to the cabinet they are going to be the basis of Zimbabwe producing a bill of peace and reconciliation, which will be an act. But before we get to that stage, in November, each legislator will take those four documents to their constituencies for four months, and uh, the civil society will meet and interrogate the four documents. By March next year, we will go back to the parliament, we will come up with an act which gives Zimbabwe an infrastructure for peace, which is something that has never happened in our country. So really I'm here because Miriam has been an integral part and Mrs. Mary Robinson of giving us an understanding of how we will generate the energy of women to contribute to the peace building process in Zimbabwe. I thank you very much. And Miriam, we wish you the very best 
in this new venture. And uh, really, we are so grateful you've introduced us to Marka Klompe that we had never heard of before. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, that you have introduced us to Dick and his beautiful family, Iris and his wife. And I have been introduced to another angle that you might need to now work with us on and the honorables who are here of the establishment of homes for the elderly for everybody in an inclusive way. And maybe we could get a strategy to get all of us out of government into these homes and enjoy a really good rest. Thank you everybody, thank you very much. Thank you.